Number 25, Integrated Concepts. The tethered satellite discussed in this module is producing 5 kilovolts and a current of 10 amps flows. Letter A, what magnetic drag force does this produce if the system is moving at 7.8 kilometers per second? All right, so just take a look. Uh, we discussed the nature of this problem in a couple problems prior. So we have a current that's moving upwards, right? Now, if you use right-hand rule number one and you have a current flowing upwards, your thumb is pointing up, you have a net external field here pointing into the page. So your fingers are pointing into the computer screen. Now it should look like you're rigidly shaking someone's hand. The force now that's acting on this moving, that's acting on this wire right now will be in the left direction because your palm should be pointing to the left. Now this is known as the magnetic drag force. Why is it called the magnetic drag force? Well, because there's a velocity moving to the right. So what's this force is opposing the motion and therefore it's dragging on it, right? Oh, such a drag. So what we now need to do is we now need to figure out a way to calculate this for, uh, force, right? Don't worry about it. It's not magnetic drag force, great. We gotta calculate the force on a particular current flowing through a net external field. That's how you have to reframe the problem. And I think as soon as you do that, you're like, wait a minute, is this a concept from the prior chapter? Uh, yes, it is, right? That the force will be equal to ILB sine theta. Now the theta is the angle between the current and the external field, and therefore that is 90 degrees, so sine of 90 is just one, so you just go, see you later. What's the strength of that external field? Well, they're telling you it's the strength of the Earth's field. So the Earth's field from the prior problem, they gave it to us. It's going to be 5 times 10 to the minus 5th. All right, Tesla. What's the length of the wire? They didn't tell me. Well, that was in the prior problem. All right, the length of that, I guess this tether satellite is about, t t uh, well, at least I'm going to use that value because I need it. Uh, it's about 20,000 uh, meters. And then we know the uh, current now, right? So this is a concept from the prior chapter. So this is simple now. This is 10 amps. The uh, length there is going to be 20,000 meters, and then the uh, magnetic field is going to be 5 times 10, the Earth's magnetic field there, and that's all we got to do, okay? So 10 times 20,000 times then 5 times 10 to the minus 5th, we get a value of 10, okay? So this is basically 10. How many sig figs? Eh, who cares at this point, right? Newtons? All right, so that's basically letter A. So now letter B, it says how much uh, kinetic energy is now uh, removed from the system in one hour, neglecting any change in altitude. Okay, so you, I already tell, right, we have one hour here. We're probably going to need that in seconds. You know one hour consists of 3,600 seconds now. Okay, so for letter B, um, what we're going to do is we have to try to figure out how much kinetic energy is removed from the system in one hour. So what we can do is we can think about it in a couple of ways. We have to now think about how can we relate now energy to the things that we know, including possibly force. How is energy related to force, right? Remember, energy could be code word for just work, right? The units of work are ju is joules. The units of energy is joules. Work is a type of joule. Uh, well, <laughs> it's a type of energy, which is, a du uh, which is uh, represented in joules, all right? So now I'm thinking, well, how is work and force connected? Oh, wait a minute. Is this from way back when? That work is equal to force multiplied by the distance over which that force is applied? Oh, yes. Way back when, right? Blast from the past, all right? Some blasts for the past are good. This one isn't. So uh, what we now need to realize is we now need to try and figure out how do we calculate now the work, all right? This energy that is removed is the same thing as the kinetic energy removed. Why? Because it's no change in altitude, okay? There's no change in altitude, all right? So therefore, what that means is that uh, we can assume that all the change, the change, whatever work is being done is uh, going to go directly to kinetic energy, okay? So uh, now, uh, so we, we have to find W, okay? And we know the force. Now we have to figure out the distance. Well, it told you the velocity and it's telling you the time. So can't we find distance, right? That's simple now. So in other words, this distance is just going to be velocity times time, right? So V times T. So make sure you have everything in the right units. This is 10 Newtons. The velocity is 7,800, right? 7,800 meters per second, all right? And what's the time? 3,600 seconds. Looks like a G, but you know what that is. So 10, I try to write in hieroglyphics sometimes. So it's 10 times 7,800 times then uh, 3,600. 
So this, oh, it didn't even put it in scientific for me. <laughs> 2.81 times 10 to the, don't you hate when that happens? You're like, oh God, now I got to count all the zeros. You go cross-eyed while you're trying to do it. And then while you're talking, you're probably going to mess it up. Just like I'm doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is eight, right? And that's in terms of joules. So that is now the uh, energy removed, basically. Okay, so that's letter B. So now letter C, it says, what is the change in velocity uh, if the mass of the system is 100,000 kilograms? So we know that, velo that the kinetic energy is related to velocity via this equation, that Ke is going to be equal to one half the mass times the velocity squared. Now we might be quick to say that the change in kinetic energy should be then equal, should be a function then of this changing velocity squared. But the problem is when you do that, it's like saying the change in velocity and then you're going to square it. So you can't, you, you got to be so careful with this. And we talked about this way, way back when. So what we have to do here is we actually have to do something like this, where let's call this the initial kinetic energy and this will be the initial velocity. And now I'm going to have my final kinetic energy formula. This is one half then m times the final velocity squared. If I want to find the change in kinetic energy, I can simply now take the, the final kinetic energy, KEF, minus KEI, right? And that should then be equal to, well, this value subtracted by this value, right? Because they're equal. So here, meaning these two sides of my equation are equal. So there's one half times the mass times the final velocity squared minus then one half times the mass times that initial velocity squared. Now, what I realize is that this is the change in kinetic energy. So I'm going to just, you know, plug that in there. But what I realize here is that I can factor out the one half m and this is now the change in the velocity. So it, it's not, you have to actually have these two values, square them first, and then do the subtraction. That's the problem, okay? So um, in order to solve this problem now, what, I'm, what we're gonna do is we're gonna solve for the final velocity first. We know the initial velocity was 7,800 meters per second, okay? So I'm gonna find the final, and then I'm gonna subtract the two. All right, we've seen problems like this in the past. So why don't we do this? Let's move this stuff on out of the way. All right. And let's erase some uh, stuff on at the top so we got a little space. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this formula, okay? Right on down here. So I'm going to start plugging in. Now the change in kinetic energy, now it's negative, right? So basically, should this answer have been negative? Uh, maybe. I mean, they're asking us, they're saying how much how much kinetic energy is removed? So when I give a positive answer like this, I'm stating this is the amount of energy that is removed. You don't necessarily have to put the negative sign in. If they just said, what is the change in energy, then you should put the negative sign in because it'll tell you now how it's changing. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. But now once I use this change of kinetic energy, I need to plug in the negative sign. The sign will become important. Okay, otherwise we're going to calculate it the wrong way. So this is then going to be equal to a negative one half. Um times then the mass of 100,000, times then the final velocity squared, minus then the initial, which is 7,800 squared, okay? So uh, this is 50,000, then divide out the 50,000 on over to the left. So we're gonna take that exact answer from before, right? We're gonna take the uh, 2.81, which is really 2.808, right? Blah, 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 times 78, divided by now 50,000. So that's gonna be now negative, negative, 5,616, that's going to be equal to VF squared minus then 7,800 squared. Add the 7,800 squared to both sides. All right, and that should now work out to be, whoops, hold on. Sorry, so 7,800 squared minus then that value. So this is now going to work out to be about 6.08 times 10 to the 3, 5, 6, 7th. Okay, that'll be equal to VF squared. Now, when you do this stuff, you gotta, the, the change is gonna be so, 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 so tiny that you have to use exact values here. So I'm gonna take the square root of that exact answer. I'm not plugging this into the calculator, I'm plugging the exact answer of that into the calculator from before. So the final velocity here is gonna be 7,799, you know, point six four whatever, okay, six four. So this is now the final velocity, but that should make sense because the initial was 7,800, and now it's a little less than 7,800. So it's losing velocity, why? Because energy is being removed. Should make sense, all right? If you left out the, if you made this a positive, then you would have had an increase in velocity, which wouldn't have made sense. How are you increasing velocity if the kinetic energy is being removed? 
So that takes care of then that. So the change in velocity, sorry. So this is the final velocity, but then they wanted the change, right? So then all I got to do is take the 7800, subtract this on out from it, and then I find the change. So I'm just going to do that and, you know, the change then. Oh, silly goose. 7800 minus, I added them. Okay, so that works out to be about 0 0.36 uh, meters, you know, 0 meters per second. That's then the change in the velocity. And if you were to just, you know, do it before where you had the change here and you solved it, it wouldn't be right. You Try it for yourself. So, um, all right, so that's, uh, you know, C. And then letter D, it says, discuss a long-term consequence, say a week-long mission space shuttle's orbit, noting the if, what effect. Okay, well, if the velocity keeps decreasing, um, you know, where's it going to go? It goes to zero. And then where does the satellite go? It crashes. So that's the long-term consequence. All right. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I appreciate it. Hopefully that helps. And I will see you in the next problem. All right. Take care.